Hi guys, we're back with more of The Terrible Two by Jory, John, and Mac Barnett, illustrated by Kevin Cornell. We are on chapter 14. Chapter 14. <clears throat> Miles stood next to the wagon full of gifts. This was going to be good. He grabbed a fork and a glass and dinged them together until he had the crowd's attention. Everybody turned to look at him. <clears throat> Hey, it's the new kid, Stuart said. He's dinging that glass. Why is he dinging a glass? With everybody's eyes on him, Miles ascended the gazebo's five short steps. He took the speech from his back pocket, cleared his throat, <clears throat> and began. Hello, everybody. My name is Miles Murphy, and I'm the new kid here at Yanni Valley. I'd love to take this opportunity to say happy birthday to Cody Bertiler. That's as far as he got before a yellow hatchback careened into the parking lot, honking its horn. Beep, beep, beep. The driver's door flew open and Principal Barkin spilled out. Purple-faced and huffing, Barkin hustled across the grass, waving his arms. Stop everything, he shouted. Stop that kid. An uncomfortable murmur ran through the crowd. Miles Murphy, said Barkin, arriving at the gazebo. Stop this right now. You are duck. Stand over there. Miles walked down the gazebo's five short steps. The crowd gaped. Holly smirked. Niles nervously adjusted his sash. Barkin took the stage. Students, he said. Principal Barkin stood in silence, waiting for everybody to stop talking. When you are planning a prank, it is important to plan for any contingency. And Miles had planned for this. In his, in his pranking notebook, under the heading Possible Disasters, Miles had listed thunderstorm, squirrel attack, and busted by grown-ups. Miles knew when Principal Barkin had confiscated his invitation that there was a chance, however slim, that his prank would be compromised. And that's why he had an action plan for this moment. Sneak away with the presents. Miles gripped the wagon's handle. Students, said Principal Barkin. He removed a piece of paper from his pocket. What was it? A behavior report? An expulsion form? A warrant for the arrest of Miles Murphy? No. It had guitars and footballs and lightning bolts. It was the invitation Principal Barkin had taken on Thursday. Barkin held it in the air. Students, said Barkin. When Cody Bird Tyler personally invited me to his birthday party, I was stunned. Although I probably shouldn't have been, Cody has always been the kind of upstanding lad who respects his elders. And although I am not even his principal, my understanding is that Cody goes to St. Perpetua, where he is a star on the field and in the classroom, not to mention his band, which, although I'm not a big fan of contemporary music, well, even I can plainly see that Cody Bertiler really rocks the house. As Barkin made a strumming motion with his hands, Miles began to realize something. He wasn't in trouble. The prank was still on. Miles stopped his retreat. He'd only made it a yard or so. He took his first breath in 30 seconds and looked at his principal. As I was saying, I assume Cody invited me because I am a pillar of Yanni Valley. And that is why I'm here, to honor Cody and make sure that he is given a birthday speech by a pillar of the community and not by some kid who just got here and is known to have some behavioral issues, like probably parking my car at the top of some steps. Something hissed loudly. Sorry, said Stuart, that was my present. Again, as I was saying, we are here for Cody Bertiler's birthday, a very special birthday. His Barkin looked down at the invitation. 13th. Wow, that's a big one. And that's why I pass on best birthday. That's why I pass on best birthday wishes from the whole Barkin family. My son Josh sends his regrets. He couldn't be here because it's his mother's birthday. My wife also sends her regrets. She couldn't be here because it's her birthday. A lot of birthdays today, but I wasn't going to miss this party, which is, of course, the biggest of the year. And look at that cake. Can somebody grab me a piece? Niles rushed up to the gazebo with a giant corner slice. To Cody Bertiler, said Principal Barkin, his fork aloft. To Cody Bertiler, said the crowd. Happy birthday, said Barkin through a mouthful of cake. That would probably sound more like, happy birthday. Happy birthday, said the crowd. 
Principal Barkin smacked his lips a few times. I'm sorry, this cake is a little dry. Could someone bring me a juice or something so I can give the rest of my speech? The crowd, tired of hearing Barkin's speech, began chanting, Cody, 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 Cody. Barkin, overcome by the spirit of the crowd, his mouth still full of cake, joined in. Cody, Cody, Cody. Barkin clapped his hands and stepped down from the gazebo. Cody, 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 Cody. All eyes were directed at the empty stage. Miles smoothed the front of his shirt. The prank was back on. This was the moment. This was his moment. It was perfect. He walked back to, toward the gazebo. The kids chanted, Cody. The sun shone. An electric guitar riff blasted through the park. The crowd parted, and from its midst arose a tall boy wearing a football helmet and jersey. He bounded past Miles and took the gazebo's five steps in a single leap. The boy had an electric guitar slung around his shoulder. The number on the back of his jersey was one. The name was Burr Tyler. Chapter 15. Hello, Yanni Valley, the kid said. Happy birthday to me. The electric guitar riff sounded again. Miles swayed slightly as his brain tried to process what was unfolding before him. Cody Burr Tyler, a kid who didn't exist, a kid who Miles made up, was standing in front of him. And he was cool. Although Miles' pranking notebook contained contingency plans for tornado, bird attack, and food poisoning, there was nothing in there for your fictional character magically becomes real, pulls a green pail out, of, out from behind the gazebo and throws footballs into the crowd, which is what was happening right now. The students made a frenzied scramble for the footballs, which Cody had autographed. Principal Barkin, being a good two feet taller than everyone else in the crowd, was catching most of the balls. He looked absolutely giddy. I'm open, I'm open, he shouted. Cody Burr Tyler held the bucket upside down to show it was empty. The kids groaned and settled down. Hey, all right, that was a lot of fun, but if I could get serious for a moment. Cody's voice got quiet. I just want to thank you for making my birthday party exactly what I wanted it to be, the party of the year. Principal Barkin, thanks for that moving speech. I wish you were my principal. Barkin applauded alone. And to all of you, I just have one thing to say. Party down, live large, and thanks for the presents. The gut electric guitar started up again. Where was the guitar even coming from? Cody hadn't played the one on his back this whole time. Cody Bert Tyler gave, the ma gave a massive thumbs up to the crowd. They roared. Wow! He jumped the banister and landed on the grass. Everybody roared again. Wow! Peace out, everybody! Cody Bert Tyler took the wagon's handle from Miles. Thanks for keeping this warm for me, little guy, he said. Miles watched as Cody Bert Tyler sauntered off with the gifts and loaded them into the trunk of a stretch limo, which apparently had pulled up during his speech. Keep the party going without me, everybody, he said. I got to run. There's another party for me in my house. Then Cody Bert Tyler got into the back seat, still wearing his helmet, and the limo drove away. So... What just happened here? Who do you think is Cody Bird Tyler? What's going on? You can make your predictions what you think is going to happen next and also what you think happened in this chapter. I hope you enjoyed it.